Live from the BDN Studios, it's Bang and Dang. That's awesome. If you don't like that, then you ain't black. Welcome back to Outlaws and Gunslingers with your host Bang and Dang here, and it's a very special recording day for us as July the 4th be with you. It's almost about four hours away from fireworks time. Got the beer flowing, barbecue going, and mm, we croquet should, balls are slamming. We should be uh, up there with the family, but instead we're down here <laughs> recording a, yeah, yeah. a uh, Outlaws and Gunslingers also, episode. Uh, 91 degrees, heat index of 99. Yeah, it's pretty pretty fucking uh, stand, uh, stand still outside and you got sweat pouring down you. Kind yeah. of day out there, but it should be nice and cool by the time we... Hit up the fireworks, so hope all you guys that are listening to this, all you Americans at least. Right. Or if not, whatever. Hope you guys are all having a nice uh, independence or had a nice independence day and nobody got no uh, extremities blown off. Uh, wasn't Canada Day the other day? Is that the same? I need, I need to I should have looked up on that. Uh, it's today. It's National Day of Canada, federal statutory. Today? Oh, no, it's Thursday, July uh, it's the anniversary first. of the Confederation. National Day of Canada <laughs> celebrates the anniversary of Canadian Confederation, down there. which occurred on July 1st, no. 1867. Right Showcase is an important national milestone on the way to the country's full independence. The day signifies the spirit on of the Canadian way. patriotism. Right. You're going way to into Canada today, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, Independence Day. Hope you guys all had a good one. And uh, over here on the Outlaws and Gunslingers, we are continuing on the old Prohibition train bandwagon if you guys listened last week you know that uh we said we'd be doing this week's episode all about the purple gang purple gang in detroit michigan welcome to detroit city i said the purple gang's detroit city i said get me a bootlegger you know Mm. i I need that liquor yo (laughs) (laughs) stupid (laughs) Fast forward that, guys. <laughs> the Purple Gang ran Detroit in the 1920s, led by Abe Bernstein. Bernstein. The Purple Probably Gang Bernstein, was Bernstein. a mob of bootleggers and hijackers who operated out of Detroit. Guy. Nice. Out of Detroit, Michigan. In the 1920s, like I said, the group of mostly young Jewish immigrants got its start in the Hastings Street neighborhood mostly. known as Paradise Valley in Detroit's Lower East Side. Mm. Many of the core members went to Bishop School together, where many of them were placed in the problem child, child quote okay. unquote, All division right. of the school. Well, these boys became thieves and pickpockets in an area called the Eastern Market close to their school. Of course they did. As they got older, their crimes got bigger, mm-hmm. and they began to commit armed robbery, oh, loan no. sharking, extortion under the mentorship of older neighborhood gangsters. Of course. Not, uh, under the mentorship, they're basically probably forced to do these things. Send the youngins in, get shit done, right? Well, I don't know if they were forced to, but I mean, well, you know they probably I mean. sought advice from the old timers. You know, what do we do? They're like, you know, these things just came out called the Tommy guns. Go get you, go get you a couple of them. Go get yourself a couple of Tommy guns. You're gonna need them, Tommy. Go get you a Tommy gun just for you. Go get you a U gun. Get you, get you, I got me a U gun. A me gun. A me gun. <laughs> hey, 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 a me hey. gun. And they're like, no, it's a me go. No, it's a me gun. <laughs> hey, a me gun. <laughs> there are no various theories as to the origin of the name Purple Gang itself. One version says that a member of the gang was a boxer who wore purple shorts during his bouts. Another was the name came from a. a <laughs> Another was that the name came from a uh, conversation between two shopkeepers. Okay. These boys are not like other children of their age. They're tainted. Off color. Yes. Replied the other <laughs> shopkeeper. <laughs> They're rotten. Purple-like. Oh, I thought I was going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> They're rotten. Purple-like. The color of bad meat. Okay. You know what? They are the purple gang. They're a purple gang. By the 1920s, Detroit had become <laughs> a major port for running and distributing Alcohol products from Canada during prohibition. prohibition. They operated between Detroit and Chicago and would meet behind the Bohm Theater or in secret places in houses of Albion, a small town halfway between the two points. Ooh, Albion. Okay, so they got themselves a little Canada. Uh, that's perfect. You know, you would think Detroit would have been the hot spot. 
Oh, they operated. They operated between Detroit and Chicago. Right, but got their shit from Canada. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, the gang became hijackers and gained a reputation for stealing the alcohol cargoes of older and more established criminal gangs. Damn, they're fucking with the OGs out there. Well, they're the only one basically getting all the liquor. Their reputation for terror increased, and people began to fear them. Even Chicago gangster Al Capone himself was against expanding his rackets in Detroit, so he began a business accommodation with the Purple Gang in order to prevent. A bloody, Not bloody that, war. You know how many other major figures were going through Detroit, too? It was just a step on everybody's toes. Plus, these guys probably were like badass motherfuckers. We'll find out. Several, several, several years, the gang managed to prosper. I don't know if it was that long. but <laughs> Well, it's just probably one several. For several years. How many is several? Is it more than four? Over three. No, that's a few. Yeah, several. Oh, a few is over two. Several. Several is like five or more, right? Several. Three or more. Three or more. For several years, three or more, possibly, <laughs> <laughs> the gang managed to prosper. That, that, uh, <laughs> that, um, that south, southern accent's for you, Mikey. Cousin Mike. <laughs> uh, cousin Mike. The gang managed the prosperous business of supplying Canadian whiskey to the Capone organization in Chicago. The Purple Gang was involved in various other criminal actions. Yes, they were. Such as kidnapping other gangsters for ransom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love it. Jeez. All right, which became very popular during this era. The Federal Bureau of Investigation <laughs> suspected that they were involved with the Lindbergh baby kidnapping. What is the Lindbergh baby kidnapping? It's highlighted in blue. So you don't know good. the Lindbergh baby kidnapping? Man. Charles Lindbergh? I mean, I don't. The pilot? What is Lindbergh baby kidnapping anyway? Oh, the Lindbergh baby kidnapping. That's Charles Lindbergh. They, uh, they were having a party or some shit. At his house. And, uh... In Detroit? No, the baby was upstairs. And when they went to check on him, he was gone. And then they found the baby dead in the woods, like, a couple months later or some shit. For, mm. They had, like, ransom notes and all that good stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's some shit. Mm. Mm. Which, uh, makes sense now that the Purple Gang was involved in various other criminal actions, such as kidnapping other gangsters for ransom. Right. Which is the same thing they did with Lindbergh baby kidnapping. In New Jersey. Oh, they did get the money, but then they tracked the ransom money to uh, the guy, and then they uh, got put in jail, I believe. He... Ransom payment. The payment was packaged in a wooden box that was custom made in the hope that it would be later identified. Um, yep. Discovery of the body on May 12th. Uh, the bills weren't marked, but serial numbers were recorded, so basically they were marked. Nice. Frank Wilson came up with that idea. Tracking the ransom money, how they do that. Investigators who were working on the case were soon at a standstill. There were no developments and little evidence of any sort, so police turned to the attention to tracking the ransom payments. Obviously, they should have done that in the fucking first place. 250,000 copies were distributed to the businesses, mainly truck, in New York City. A truck driver got out to pee on the side of the road, discovered the body of a toddler. The skull was bra badly fractured and the body decomposed with evidence of scavenging by animals. They found the money from Chicago to Minneapolis all the way to New York. Obviously, he was handing out whoever did it. Fucking people got money. You're never finding that. Huh. Okay, so I guess a little side history there of the old uh, Lindbergh baby kidnapping. Back to the Purple Game. Back to the Purple Game. By the 1920s, late 20s, the Purple Game reigned supreme over the Detroit underworld, controlling mm. the city's vice, gambling, liquor, and drug trade. Damn. They also ran the local wire service, providing horse racing information to local horse oh. betting parlors. The gang members consorted with more infamous mobsters, branching out into other cities as well. Abe Bernstein was a friend of Meyer Lansky and uh -oh. Joe Adonis, with uh -oh. whom he owned several Miami, Florida gambling casinos in his later years. The gang hijacked prize fight films and forced movie theaters to show them for a high fee. No shit. They also defrauded insurance companies by staging fake accidents. These motherfuckers were doing anything and everything to, get to make money. a quick little buck. And the thing is, they were already raking in the dough with the alcohol and drugs and right. All the other shit. So they're like, the horse betting itself. So they're like, uh, yeah, why don't we just steal <laughs> boxing films and that, force these movie theaters to right. show them? As the gang grew in size and in, in influence, they began hiring themselves out as hitmen. So now <laughs> all this other stuff's not enough. Now they can no, like, we want to murder. We, yeah, we, <laughs> we want to murder for other gangs. Right. Not even our own. Right. And took part in the Cleaners and Dyers War. What is the cleaners and dyers wire? We'll figure that out later. The purple's property from the Detroit laundry <laughs> the industry. The property from the Detroit laundry industry. Damn, yeah, man, they're probably from dirty clothes. And <laughs> they'll never go out of style. Uh, the unions and associations, what they, what they uh, profited, profited from. from. Um, they were hired out to keep union members in line and to harass non-union independents. Bombing, arson, theft, and moita. 
were the usual tactics <laughs> that the gang employed to enforce the union I, yeah, I policy. Would say that would be about the extent of it. What else do you have to do? I believe Moida came Beatings, first. Beatings, at least, right? Too, right? A bombing's murder. Arson turns into murder. Theft could turn into murder. So right, it's all murder. Right. Just murder. They should just leads back to murder. murder. <laughs> Abe Axler, and this sounds like a porn name. Abe Axler and Eddie, Eddie Fletcher. Fletcher. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Abe Axler and Eddie Axler and Fletcher are. <laughs> right. <laughs> Digging deep, <laughs> <laughs> pounding holes. <laughs> <laughs> were reputedly imported from New York City to take part in the scheme, although other sources put their origins in Detroit itself. In 1927, nine members of the Purple Gang, A. Bernstein, Ooh. Raymond Bernstein, Irvin Milberg, Eddie Fletcher, Joe Miller, Irvin Shapiro, Abe Kaminsky, Kaminsky, Abe Axler, and Simon Axler were arrested and charged with conspiracy to extort money from Detroit wholesale cleaners and dyers. They were eventually acquitted of all charges. No shit. So that's the uh, cleaner and dyer war. Pretty much right, they uh, right, right. are forcing these guys to pay protection money right. to them. Harry Rosman was president and owner oh, of the famous to, cleaners to, uh, and to hear dyers right now. <laughs> in Detroit, Michigan. That's Harry Rosman, president and owner of the famous cleaner and dyers. He gained public notoriety for being the key witness testifying against the infamous Purple Gang in a trial that lasted from 1928 to 1929. Okay. The prosecution alleged uh, extortion activities against Detroit area businesses during the sometime violent showdown known as the Cleaners and Dyers Wars. Rosman testified that the Purple Gang asked for $1,000 hairs per week Jeez. from his and other area cleaners and dryers businesses. Dyers. Right, and dyers. Dry, it should be dryers. <laughs> Why they're dyers? Yeah, uh, cleaners and dyers business for their protection against violence. What violence do you say? Which gonna come? You'll see if we're not. <laughs> well, it could either be you. bombings, arson, <laughs> theft, or murder. Dun dun dun. We'll let you. Murder. Right. We'll let you pick one that can't happen, <laughs> and it can't be murder. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're, they're like, no, we'll let you pick which one, and trust me, it's all going to end with murder anyway. So <laughs> right. I just pick that one. Right. Let's make, we, it, make it fast. We'll, we'll still rob you, though. We'll probably burn your place down anyway, so. Yeah. Either, all of it. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> well, Detroit mob war soon ensued between oh. the I- Italian, Irish, and Jewish bootleggers over territory, doesn't it always? Oh. The Purples fought a vicious turf war with the Licavoli squad, led by the brothers Tommy and Pete Licavoli. Nice. Or is it Lichaboli? Lichaboli. Right. In uh, March 1927, three men were killed. The deceased men had been brought in Detroit as hired assassins for the Purple Gang, and the motive for the murder was believed to be a retaliation for a double cross. Oh, we don't double cross anybody. Uh, uh, the homicides took place in an apartment leased by Purple Gang members Eddie Fletcher and Abe Axler. Oh, see? Oh, man. Axler and Fletcher in <laughs> murder. <laughs> the double cross. <laughs> right. And reportedly Fred Burke, which made them prime suspects in the oh, slaying. Oh, they're slayers, too. The three suspects, Fletcher, Axler, and Burke, those a fucking law firm now, right. uh, were questioned, <laughs> as were other Purples and Associates. No one was ever convicted of the murders. Of, of course, course not. Of These course. murders were reportedly the first use of a submachine gun in Detroit underworld oh. slaying history. First of everything happens first in Detroit. First of everything. So they busted out the old Tommy yeah. guns like I uh, said earlier. Al Capone's like, did you just hear that from Detroit? Fucking heard multiple rounds. Find out what that is and bring it to me. Right. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, here you go. Speaking of. The Purple Gang was suspected of taking part in the St. Louis Valentine's Day Massacre. St. Louis Valentine's Day oh, Massacre. St. Louis. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Purple Gang was suspected of taking part in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in Chicago. That makes sense. February 13th, 1929. A. Birdstein reputedly called, <laughs> reputedly called Bugs Moron. <laughs> <laughs> God, called Bugs Moron. <laughs> Bugs Moron to tell him that a hijacked load of booze, booze. was on its way to Chicago. Well, Bugs who was in the middle of a turf war with Al Capone, had only recently begun to trust Bernstein, who had previously been Capone's chief supplier of Canadian liquor. Wait, the, so Bernstein supplied Capone. Right. Now, uh, now he's, he's on Moran's side. Yeah. Okay. Now, he, now, he, now he does Bugsies. Right. Um, the next day, however, instead of delivering a load of liquor, four men, two in police uniforms, went to SMC Cartage of North Clark Street uh, Bugs Northside Hangout, and open fire with Thompson machine guns. There it is. Say hello. <laughs> Killing seven men in what has become known 
as a, as a Saint, Saint Louis Valentine's <laughs> Day massacre. <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right. It happened in Chicago. <laughs> it happened in Chicago. Yeah. Saint Louis, Chicago. There's no such place. All right. It's like there's no Springfield. So this guy, uh, Springfield for the Simpson. This guy was on L side, and then got all schmoozy with Moran. Right. And then uh, ended up being the one that was in part of sending his men over there to uh, do the old massacre, huh? To take out. I think uh, him and Hell were working all together that's all what along. That's what I'm saying. So he tricked uh, right. the old bugs right. and then ended up uh, sending his men to do I, the deed. You know something bad's going to happen when it, just when he started to gain his trust or some shit. What does it say? He had only recently begun to trust <laughs> Bernstein. So, uh, yeah. What, just, soon, uh, soon as, you got, as soon as you invite him to his house, he's like, I got him. Mm-hmm. You're done now, bugs. Done. Well, at least some of your men. You let me piss. You in will your, be done. You though. let me piss in your toilet. Right. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> the purple gang began terrorizing Detroiters with oh, the street no. executions of their enemies. Damn. What is this? The fucking Mexican cartel? You ain't getting. Hanging them from bridges and shit. Right. Among their victims was city police officer Vivian Welsh, uh-huh. killed on February first, nineteen twenty-seven. He was later revealed to be a dirty cop. I'm sure he was. Who was? I mean, his name's Vivian. Right. (laughs) A dirty cop who was uh, supposedly trying to extort money from the Purple Gang. The gang was also accused of murdering Jerry Buckley in Uh 1930, who was a well-known radio figure. Oh, no. Why would he do that? Right in the lobby of a downtown hotel. What did Buckley do? Owe money and probably gambling debts or something? That, or he's talking shit about him on air. Mm. Right? Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what old Jerry Jerry Buckley has to do. Oh, corruption everywhere. Yep. He was fucking basically outing everybody. Like, dude, you guys shut your mouth. In 1930, Buckley's programs increasingly focus on claims of graft and corruption among various Detroit officials, including allegation of organized crime ties to uh, then Mayor Charles uh, Bold. Yeah, he had to shut him up. Along with Once the he public the mayor. works commissioner and police commissioner. Oh no! Bootleggers and speakeasies operated extensively during Prohibition in Detroit, using nearby Windsor as a conduit mm-hmm. uh, to funnel the alcohol. And Obviously. gangland killings were frequent. His denunciation of city government made the program Detroit's most popular radio broadcast. He Yep. And culminated in a successful recall of Mayor Bowles. Oh, so that was probably like their uh, hand-chosen guy. Right. Um, on the night of the successful recall, Buckley was approached by three men and shot 11 times. Yep, there it is. In the lobby of the LaSalle Hotel in Detroit, where WNBC MBC's studios were right. located. There it is. That's what we're oh. looking for. After his murder, Police Commissioner Wilcox alleged that Buckley was a known extortionist and racketeer oh. who had likely been killed because of his underworld connections. Right. Look at it. Do. No, yeah. no, the oh. police commissioner that's oh, dirty right. is trying to smear Buckley's name <laughs> on, uh, in all of this right. and trying to accuse him like he was some fucking uh right in his attempt to tarnish buckley's reputation wilcox produced an affidavit stating that the slain radio commentator had been paid four thousand in protection money by a bootlegger oh. the affidavit was soon dismissed as having been court court co- coerced 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 yeah coerced buckley's brother paul a former assistant prosecutor claimed the murder was orchestrated as revenge for the campaign against the mayor yeah. obviously yeah wow oh. Uh, in his response, Michigan Governor Fred W. Green directed the state to, to uh, investigate the murder separately from the Detroit Police Department, State Police. Ah. The investigation was taken to a grand jury by prosecutor and future governor, governor Harry Kelly. Although henchmen belonging to Detroit mobster James Blackie Lickovies, Lickovoli's gang were arrested, no convictions were secured Obviously. for the killing. The gunmen were later identified as Russell Syracuse, Joseph English, and uh, John Mirabella. Nice. All right, Joe Emmett Buckley. Oh, yeah, this dude was... Uh, Speaking the truth, gets moited at 39 years old. Yep. Yep, you didn't do that shit. Well, once he got the mayor out of there, he was like, mm, damn it, guys, we got to take care of him now. To say that he owed us a bunch of money. Right, I mean, that was obviously their uh, appointed guy that they wanted since he was all dirty, too, so... Right. That's, that's the thing. Nowadays, you can get away with that. And there ain't too many journalists, well, in the United States, anyways, that I know of. Some are, unless you're, if you're related to Hillary. What? Getting killed for uh, exposing things, but yeah, back in the day you couldn't just uh, couldn't do that, man. Nope. The gangs will take your ass out quick, instantly in the in the lobby of a fucking hotel with everybody watching. Who cares, fuck. right? No cameras, right? no nothing, nobody can say shit. Well, we, like we just read about whether the purples were involved with Buckley's death is disputed, as the police suspected the local Sicilian mob, who we just said, clearly, and uh, no one was charged in either case, and both of the murders remain officially unsolved. unsolved. I mean, that's what happens. You know how many unsolved murders back then there are. Well, you know how many unsolved murders there are now? <laughs> <laughs> right. 1931, an intra-gang dispute 
ended it in the murder of three purples by oh. members of their own gang that had a civil war. Killing of their own, that'll get you kicked out. Mm. Apparently not, but that was a thing in uh, Sons of Anarchy. You can't just kill another member. Oh, these guys were Chicago gangsters who had been imported to Detroit to help out the Purple Gang. So these guys were the outsiders. Guys that killed the guys, <laughs> the the own gang were. These guys are outsiders anyway. The three men had been had violated an unruly code by operating outside the territory allotted by them by the Purple Gang's leadership. So they went to Detroit and just fucked the whole system up. Herman Wait, ended the murder of three Purples by members of their own gang. So right. the three men had got killed. Right. Had violated an underworld code by operating outside the territory I'm allotted to them sure by the Purple was Gang these leadership. Three Chicago guys that came in to help. They probably no, came the in. three guys that got killed were operating outside Purple Gang's territory, and that's why they got killed. Right, they, they violated these, the code. Yeah, they're probably these three guys that came from Chicago. No, it says Chicago gangsters who had been imported to Detroit to help but out. But the three guys were murdered by the Chicago gangsters who had been imported to Detroit. So the guys called in from Chicago, murdered the other Purples because they were out uh, oh, right, uh, right, operating right, right. outside of the territory. Right. Well, and their names were Herman Jaime Paul, Isidore Sutker, a.k.a. Joe Sutker, and Joseph Nigga <laughs> Lubowitz. Hey, hey, it's historically accurate. Right. <laughs> uh, his name was Joseph Lebo- Lebowitz. Lebowitz. Uh, they were lured to an apartment on Collingwood Avenue. 16th September, 1931. Yes. That's those three, and, and guess what? And met their demise. Well, they uh, unfortunately for them, they believed they were going to a peace conference with the Purple Leaders. After a brief discussion, <laughs> the three men were gunned down. Authorities caught up with the gang when they burst into Fletcher's apartment and found the suspect, Abe Axler, Irvin Milberg, and Eddie Fletcher. Fucking Axler and Fletcher, man. Mm-hmm. That's got to be a TV show or something. They were all playing cards, cigars in their mouth and shit. Right. And they were like, ah, stupid fuckers, and then, Jeez. Well, Ray Bernstein and Harry Keywell were also arrested. Mm. Milberg, Keywell, and Bernstein, three high-ranking purples, were convicted of first-degree murder convicted. in the Collinwood Manor Massacre and were sentenced to life wow. in prison. So you can't kill Chicago guys, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. You don't kill Chicago. You didn't kill Chicago guys. Oh, yes, you just seen it. An inter-gang dispute ended in the murder of three purples by members of their own gang, Chicago gangsters who had been imported to Detroit to help the purple gang. So them were the three guys. All right, so they murdered those three guys. Those three Chicago guys. No, yes. the Chicago guys murdered the fucking Purple right. Gang guys. Right, and then they murder them. No. Yes. No. Right. No. Yes. No. Yes. The three guys murder were these guys that you just named. Yeah. These got... Chicago guys murdered these guys. And the leaders of the Purple Gang went to prison for it. I don't think so. Yes. No. I'm sorry, it ain't happening. Those guys that got murdered were the Chicago guys. Yeah, the Chicago guys murdered three other guys, and then these guys murdered these guys. Wait, okay. An intra-gang dispute ended in the murder of three Purples by members of their own gang, Chicago gangsters who had been imported to Detroit to help out the Purple Gang. The three men... Yeah, so it's these Chicago the murder guys. of three Purples. Murder of three Purples. It doesn't say how many members murdered them, but the three men who were murdered had violated an underworld code by operating outside the territory allotted them by the Purple Gang leadership. Right. Right. So... Nowhere does it say that the Chicago guys that killed the three guys were killed. Right there. Where? Joe those Sutter. are the guys, those are the three gang members killed by the Chicago guys. No. Yes, they were. No, these guys are getting charged for their murder. So why would that happen? <sighs> it would never fucking happen. These guys ain't going down for the fucking Chicago guys' murder. That ain't not ever going to fucking happen. Of course they are. Why would they go down? They're the leaders. And? Clearly they went down for it. I think. Are you serious right now? I think. No. The Chicago guys, the beginning of the story there. The Chicago guys came in and ran outside the territory thinking, oh, you know, whatever, I'm from Chicago, these guys ain't shit. And then, yes, these three Fletcher, Axler, and Milberg fucking figured it out and killed them. No. Why would... Th- so your claim is three high-ranking guys did the murder themselves instead of sending stupid people like the guys from Chicago to do it. If that were to happen, those guys no. from Chicago would have got charged. No, they have other... If that's the whole reason for them sending somebody else so they can't get charged for it. Why would they go to jail for that when these guys are definitely there for fucking to take the fall? I mean, this just don't make no damn sense. It's just stupidity. And in the murder of three purples by members of their own gang, the, the, three, the three men had violated underworld code by operating outside, outside the territory allotted to them. Three members of the Little Jewish Navy, a group of purples who owned several boats and participated in rum running, as well as hijacking, decided they would break away from the gang and become an underworld power themselves. This was the beginning of the end for the purple gang. The three men, Jaime, Isidore, Joe... 
Oh, yeah. Joe and Joe were invited to a peace conference with the gang leaders. However, after a brief discussion, the three unarmed men were shot to death. A bookie named Saul Levine, who had transported the three men to the fatal meeting, was arrested soon afterwards and quickly frightened into becoming a state's witness. Levine's testimony was devastating, and three of the four purples involved in the incident were quickly arrested. Milberg, Keywell, and Bernstein, three high-ranking purple gang members, were convicted of first-degree murder and sent to prison for life. Yeah, so the three guys from Chicago didn't get killed. Maybe. They don't even say that. Are you sure? Three men Which who the, got killed were Paul. The little Jewish Navy, so they're Jewish. I get that. Did they come? But the three men who got killed were right. Jaime Paul, Sutker, and Lebowitz. Right. They went to the peace conference and got killed. Right. It doesn't say anything about the three Chicago guys killing them. Why were getting? Even, I mean, getting killed. Why would he be part of the part of the? Uh, who's from Chicago? They didn't name him. Is it is Bernstein and them from Chicago? That's what we need See, to figure out. This don't even mention Chicago. That article don't. That's what we need to figure out here. Um, wait. Just read that last. Ray Bernstein and Harry Keywell. I think it. The other guys that the three gang, the three gang members, not the Detroit guys. There's no reason to mention the Chicago guys because they were in charge. They were there. They weren't in charge. Obviously, Detroit guys ran the show. I think it had to have been Axler, Milberg, and Fletcher are the Detroit guys, and but Ray Bernstein and Keywell were just happened to be there and were arrested too. Keywell, Bernstein, and Milberg. Milberg, Keywell, and Bernstein are the three high-ranking purples. Yeah, but not the leaders. Are they ones from Chicago? I doubt that. This don't make that last paragraph just don't make no damn sense. Well, we just looked up like eight different articles. Yeah, nothing said anything of Chicago. Oh, in 1931, Bernstein, Milberg, and Keywell were found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment for the ambush slaying of three members of a rival gang. What? I guess they would be considered rival gang because they were trying to shoot off on their own as the Jewish. What were they? The Jewish boys? Jewish boat boys or something? No, I still I don't understand. I'm, none of these articles about these guys say whether there was... I don't think they're Chicago guys. Right, we need I'm, to take I'm it I'm putting that out. to bed. All right. No, keep it in. I'm putting that to bed. You guys, if you guys are listening to this and know exactly who the three men were, which I think it's... Um, I think there's... I think it's the... They're Jewish... They're uh, not the Chicago guys that a, these think, guys murdered. No, there's the three Jewish they're guys. Not, they're we they're going before. to jail for the three members of, the own, of their own gang being killed, not the Chicago guys who killed them. If that even happened. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we need your, we need your help. We need your help. Well, Bernstein, Milberg, and Keywell were accompanied by police officers on a special Pullman train bound for Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Oh, you don't want to go to prison in UP. To begin serving their sentences in the state's maximum security prison Marquette. in Marquette, That's Michigan. That's way up there by Wisconsin. Harry Flesher, another suspect, remained on the run until 1932, but he was never convicted in connection with the massacre. Well, later on, he served time in Jackson Prison, which is the world's largest walled prison. That's in Michigan. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I wouldn't brag about that. In the early <laughs> 1950s for armed robbery of an Oakland County gambling house. Well, according to Detroit Police Chief of Detectives James E. McCarty, the convictions in Collinwood Massacre broke the back of the once powerful Purple Gang right in the finish to more than five years of arrogance and terrorism. Mm. Um, quote, unquote, right there. Really? Mm-hmm. For many years, the Purples enjoyed seemingly complete immunity from any police officer interference as witnesses to crimes because they were terrified of testifying against any criminal identified as a Purple gangster. The Purple gang became more arrogant and sloppy as time progressed because they knew. That's what happens. Right. They dressed flamboyantly. Ooh, they were all like Frequented the, the city's night spots. Okay. Were known in the public very, very well. <laughs> they lived in fine houses. Uh, yes, they did. And soon, a romantic the, the aura. Best of the best. Right. A romantic aura surrounded the purples that distinguished uh, Right. Them. So when yeah. you saw these guys walking down the street or you going into a was. club or going into right. an establishment, right. it was like a light shone on the group. And they right. were like, we're the fucking purple gang. They know who they are. Anybody knows who they are. It's like a blood and crip. You know the difference. Uh, they should have worn purple suits. Right. With the little purple fedoras and stuff like that, that or just be... like a purple fedora. And what are they? The red suit? hat. What are they? The, the fucking purple old hats. lady red hat society <laughs> the, and shit. The purple gang hat. The purple, the purple hat gang. Purple hat gang. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately for them, jealousies, just egos. Us. <laughs> How would you do it? <laughs> purple hat gang. It'd be fug fug fug. Cause fug. Man, you fug. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking fug. <laughs> Look at this fug. 
<laughs> well, jealousies, egos, and intra-gangs quarrels would eventually cause the Purple Gang to World Trade Center Tower 10, or 7, I mean, Building 7, right. collapse. Right. Well, actually, that would, that would be implode. Right, implode. That's what actually happened. Right. But uh, anyways, the police eventually moved against them as gang members began leaving behind too much evidence of their crimes. It got sloppy, man. Right. You guys can't get sloppy. Right. Well, Philip Keywell had already been convicted of moida. Sure did. And Joe Bernstein and Abe Bernstein both were given lengthy prison sentences sure after did. previously escaping significant jail time through intimidation and corrupt officials. Mm. Different waves of bloodier than previous infighting ensued, and with the aggressive and high-ranking members Abe Axer and Eddie Fletcher getting shot dead. Getting shot dead. Gone. That's a uh, story about that. And, uh... Uh, yeah, in November 1933, the bodies of Abe Axler and Eddie Fletcher were found in a car on an isolated country road. Mm. Each man had been shot numerous times in the face oh, from close shit. range. Holy fuck! In the dude, that you know that's a, like a that's a mob put right. down. They're fucking shooting you as many times right. as they can in your face, fucking you up. Right. Um. No chance. Yeah, that's how the old, old Axler and Fletcher, the Axler Ax, Axler and Fletcher story right. ends. Well, Fletcher and Axler. Right. <laughs> Fletcher and Axler shot dead. Shot dead. Then, one time partial boss, which there wasn't a strict uh, hierarchy over there. Hierarchy. 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 Yeah, nobody knew who was going to take over. Henry Shore was killed in further infighting, so... There's just a massacre to who's going to be the boss. No. Right. There wasn't a strict hierarchy, but this guy was a partial boss, and he got killed. Right. Which means right. Nobody was deciding who's going to take over. He's a partial boss, which means there's more. Somebody was deciding to try to do something. <laughs> uh, probably. Some gangsters drifted away. A few flee in Detroit. Others were executed by fellow members or rival. They are just taking each yep. other out. Yep. And several members were subsequently uh, imprisoned. Damn, dude. The gang, the gang literally imploded from the inside out, dude. Right. That's fucking crazy. Right. A rival Sicilian gang, tired of competing with the Purples, eventually decided to eliminate them. They're like, you know what? They, 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 they've eliminated 80% of themselves. Right. So let's just go in and fucking just cut the See, head off now. These guys are playing a game of risk, the, uh, the game of world domination, if you guys ever played it before. These mobsters did. And Sicilians... Isn't that fucking and a, the purple game? Wouldn't that be funny if that's right. the way it really was, though? Like, every day they had, like, a conference call. Like, I'm placing 15 guys on the corner right. of whatever. And they're, I'm going to retaliate with a... Good move, man. I'm going to retaliate with three horses and, <laughs> and a battle... Or a and, fucking uh, and I, cannon. And I might attack. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> that, would, that would be fucking... A, dude... Oh my gosh, that would be hilarious if, it, if 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 that was how war was throughout the whole world. Like you literally had to, right? You had you had a period where everybody involved in the war had should, their turn could, to do could, something, could place guys right. or something, or attack, you or have attack. Your chance, right? Right. Oh my dude, that would be fucking hilarious. not hilarious, obviously, but uh, right. People are still getting killed for nothing for uh, rich people's uh, pleasure, pretty much. But, but the, basically, uh, but seriously, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, the Sicilian gang was looking at what they seen there. They're like, "Oh, we can easily with right. what we got." They're like, "They're, they're like, we got twenty five guys here, right. and they only got two and, over there, and um, we're allowed to plus, transport troops before say, we attack. Plus, we can fucking uh, um, switch right. our troops around, and they only get one die, right? And we got three. No, they get two because yeah. they got two guys, right?" But we, and we get three though. Right. We got twenty five guys. I mean, right. come on. The chances of us uh, rolling. That's pretty of, good. Chances of them rolling twenty five sixes is not very. We're gonna lose very, some of you guys. Right, but. Right. Some of you guys might. Maybe not though. <laughs> Could be a lucky roll. Right. right. Uh, even, why, uh, what if they had to roll the dice? And right. Like, damn it. And then somebody gets shot in the head though. <laughs> like, right. Like that. They're all standing in line. Yeah. They all just stand there together. No, right. like aimlessly right. firing. It's nope. not that type of war. Nope. Like, they literally decide who who dies from a fucking. All right, the dice uh, say dice two roll. of you die and one of us dies, so figure it out. Like the lowest ranking members go. Right, the lowest ranking from there on. That's uh, they bullshit. They just get fucking shot in the head after. <laughs> damn it, a six. <laughs> you, dude, that would be fucking. Oh my god. We need to fucking make a movie like that, or right. maybe we'll. No, that can't be. A, that's a pretty dark Lee and Corey episode, but. Uh, <laughs> I would say. Um. Yeah, we need to do something like that, dude. That would be fucking hilarious. Not hilarious. I keep saying hilarious, but it's hilarious in the uh, ironic. Not even ironic. I don't even know what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> but it would be hilarious. Maybe if it was like a comedy style uh, right. uh, spoof or something. Right. Be fucking... Is there a... 
There's got to be somebody that's done a wrist style fucking right. um, no, like I don't think war so. type sketch or something. I don't think there's so. got to be. Well, if there's not, the Bang and Dane <laughs> show just copyrighted. Not right. co- you can't copyright. We're not fucking John Wangling, but um, we uh, definitely just were the first ones to come up with that idea. If it's not right. out there, just it's, so you guys know that. At, it's, uh, it's July fourth, oh, twenty twenty one at seven o four p.m. It's we thought about pending, that. which is you can still use it when it's no, you can't when it's pet pending. Uh. Yeah, you do whatever you want. No, nobody else can. No, everybody else can. Because it's still pending. Pen, yeah, right. And then once it does, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, you go ahead. Do that's why do. when a new product comes on the shelves and it's still patent pending and it you sells sells everything. a little bit and then there's 18 right. different companies that right. make the same thing. Yeah. And try to get as much money as they can for it. it gets, okay. Before they, they have to stop using it. Yeah. yeah. Or change the name or change some futuristic. Or, of it. Yeah, change like the measurement. It's right. A, it, mine's ours is a centimeter shorter. Right. I mean, right. Uh, everybody learn from fucking Vanilla Ice. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, but no, they didn't because Vanilla Ice had to pay money. Still, I don't think that fucked up. <laughs> it didn't go doom, 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 <laughs> do, do, doom, doom, and went doom, 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 do, do, doom, doom. Oh man. Anyhow, well, bearing off the track here. <laughs> Anyhow. Yeah, the Sicilian gang was uh, like, "Yeah, uh, these guys are already killing right. themselves, and so we're they, gonna fucking they, take them out." They take decided out. to eliminate them. Yeah, might as well. Well, the Purple Gang still continued in a diminished capacity. As much as they could, you know, they got the scratchlers, the scragglers underneath. Yeah, the scratchlers Ooh, too. I've been waiting to be boss all this time. Right. But you're a dumb fuck. So what? But the uh, predecessors of Detroit's modern day mafia stepped in and filled the void as the Purple Game ultimately self destructed. They're Boom. like, yeah, it's over, guys. They hit that detonate button. It was right. like the fucking missions and right. Mission Impossible. They're this like, well, they gathered the rest of them around. They're like, you guys had a good run. You planted the seed for what we're about to do. So, you know. I'm sorry you're not going to be able to be here to see it, but yeah. just know as your final breath that you guys are fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote a six, bitches. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the once most feared and powerful gang in Detroit, mm. whoever, but they had everything from liquor to whores. To Literally the whole city. Right. Estimates of around 500 rival bootleggers killed, as well as those bootleggers, the Purple Gang. Mm-hmm. Was dead. It's only for the military. <laughs> Should have done the bum bum ba bum. Oh, that's true. Bum, 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 bum. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna. Well, not really, because we got uh, purple. We got some. Uh, um, <laughs> we got some uh, recommend. Well, recommendations on the old. Uh, Purple Gang in pop culture, books, ah, all movies, and that here. sort of stuff. Although heavily fictionalized, the 1935 film Public Hero Number no. One ah. deals with the hunting down and capture of the Purple Gang. Oh shit! Okay, so we got 1959, The Purple Gang itself as the title of the movie, also heavily fictionalized. Of course, includes details of the gang's rise to prominence based on the true. Oh, story. so what you got to do is you got to watch the 1959 first. And then watch the 35 to see how the uh, hunting down and capture of the Purple Gang came out. Unless they did do that in the Purple Gang uh, 1959 movie as well. I've never seen either of them. Right. Well, during this 1959 movie, The Purple Gang, Jailhouse Rock by Lieber and Stoller. <laughs> Thank you for. Uh, which was recorded by Elvis Presley. me out Pre- of that hole. I was fucking going in there. <laughs> <laughs> which was recorded by Elvis Presley. Has the lyric The whole rhythm section was the Purple the Gang. The whole rhythm section was the Purple Gang. Is that how A 1960s second season episode of The Untouchables, simply titled The Purple Purple Gang, Gang. provides a fictional account of the Purple Gang's kidnapping of a mob courier. Is it fictional, though? Because we already proved that they, uh, they, uh, Kidnapped a bunch of rival gangs guys. So. Right. They just can never legally actually right. say it's, it's been proven. Right. Raymond Chandler mentions the Purple Gang in the novel Farewell. Farewell, my lovely. My lovely. He says, we curved through the bright mile or two of the strip. Mm. Past antique shops with famous screen names This is on in them. the 20s, antique right. shops. What the hell kind of stuff were they selling in antique shops in the 20s? Well, they went, right. they went past antique shops with famous screen names on them. Oh, wait. Past the I'm sure of... this book was written in like modern day, so they're right. going towards the yeah. Right. Okay, all right, all Past... right. Continue. I just right. botch. <sighs> Dig me out of the hole again. <laughs> Past the windows of full point lace and ancient pewter. 
past the gleaming nightclubs with famous chefs and equally famous gambling rooms run by Polish graduates of the Purple Gang. Oh, equally. Okay, yeah, so they're going down and uh, right. seeing the old buildings right. and stuff. That's what he's saying. Right. Well, Ian Fleming refers to the Purple Gang in his James Bond novels, Diamonds Are Forever, Goldfinger, and hey. The Man with the Golden Gun. Wow, okay. Uh, the Purple Gang was also referenced by Ross McDonald in his 1952 novel, The Ivory Grin. Although he was gunned down in the first scene, Max Allen Collins identified the rodent as a Purple Gang torpedo. In his novelization of the 1990... Well, there's two little... <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> two he's, little. He's, he's kept on going, huh? <laughs> 90, 1990 blockbuster film, Dick, Dick Tracy. Tracy. So that's well, probably the most famous one there. Yeah, well, in an episode of uh, Detroit 187 in an undercover cop featured, featured a man whose grandfather was a member of the gang. I don't know why we read any of this fucking shit. <laughs> right. Because the only thing that you guys care about is the 1935 film, Public Hero Number 1, right. and the 1959 film, The Film the Purple Game. Well, and Dick Tracy was a decent movie. People like that. Maybe a, the second season episode of the 1960 television series, The Untouchables, was that which really was about series? the Purple Game. Right. Well, it was a fictional account of the Purple Game's kidnapping right. of a mob carrier. But, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, that's a lot of stuff on the uh, Purple Gang. You would think there, there's got to be a movie made about these guys now. All right. A recent movie. Right. More than 1959. Right. Wherever the hell. Well, yeah, 1959. 19, yep, 59. Yeah, that was our own, our state's own. First time we've ever did a, out of all the episodes we've done on Laws and Gunslingers, we've never done an episode of anybody from Detroit? from our uh, from our home state, the great state of Michigan. Well. That's, that's pure Michigan. That's because we didn't do. Uh, we haven't done the mafia yet. We'll talk about uh, right. Hoffa getting murdered and buried in a Detroit backyard or whatever the fuck happened to him and. uh yeah, that's the Purple Gang of Detroit, ran Detroit in the 1920s until... <laughs> Damn, the Purple Gang was a, tied to the Tobacco Ranch in Clare, Michigan. Oh. Yeah. Why don't you figure that out there? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's there's lots of lost history localized about the Purple Gang, I'm sure, but uh, you guys just heard there... The Purple Gang's attorney's home. <laughs> they lived in Clare. They, like, fucking... It's a shrine. People can go past... Oh, nice. <laughs> but, yeah, you guys heard their... Oh, their hotel outline Doherty? of what happened to them. Oh, yeah, because the murder in the, ho- the Doherty Hotel in Clary. It's the Purple fucking Gang. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's why I heard the Purple Gang before. Downtown where Andresa used to live? Okay, well, that's local. Uh, uh, that's local lore. This, oh. is, uh, this is their national story, pretty oh. much, I guess. But, yeah, that's the <laughs> Purple Gang on the Outlaws and Gunslingers. And I think, I think next week what we're going to have to do is... Um, do uh, kind of like a smorgasbord. We'll do the smorgasbord, I think, because I was looking through stories today, and there's not really one person left that's uh, worth a hour episode. So maybe we'll do a smorgasbord of some kind of popular people in the Prohibition but still did their bootlegging and all that stuff. But And then I think we'll end it one more episode after that with like the effects of Prohibition on um, America and all the good stats and we'll do numbers and all that good stuff. That'll be two episodes. I think we got two episodes left of Prohibition. Then we'll get into finally the uh, Bonnie and Clyde's, Machine Gun Kelly's, the uh, Babyface Nelson's, all those famous 30s bank robbers. And yeah, that's that'll be the end of Prohibition in about two episodes probably. Don't 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 hold us to that. But on the flip side of things... Over on the uh, brand new two-week-old Bang and Dang show, the Bang and Dang show, we are on episode two, which just came out uh, Friday, so a couple days ago from when you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on the day it came out, and that one was all about the alien report from uh, the government that wasn't an alien report from the government. Was it a report? Residents of North Korea are uh, supposedly grief-stricken from the emaciated looks of their their (laughs) fear. And, uh, of course, we spend half that episode on sports, the recent sports. Speaking of sports, the Suns uh, now facing Milwaukee in the NBA Finals. Suns win. So that's a uh, upgrade. Yeah, yeah Sun. I think, I don't know. Did I pick Milwaukee in the episode that we just did on Bang and Dang Show? I can't remember. I don't remember. Um, Milwaukee Suns, which Milwaukee's hasn't won one since Kareem, and the Suns have never won one. There's, you know, I see, I saw a sat, stat the other day that there's zero players left in the NBA playoffs that have won a championship. 
So every single person, no matter who wins the championship, it's some, they're all going to be first-time champs. I can see I don't that. think that's happening fucking – that's had can, not happened in a while. I can see that on Phoenix for sure. I saw a bunch of young guys. And in Milwaukee, yeah. Yeah, there it is. So that's a crazy stat, something to look out. Uh, finally, we have an NBA I, – I, I'm probably going to watch the NBA championship. Not, not going to lie. I'd be the first complete series or game, actually, of that I've watched since this uh, COVID shit. Right, because there's really nobody that you hate playing. Right. Yeah, I don't hate nobody playing uh, mm-hmm. on either team. Mm-hmm. And um, even though I should hate Milwaukee since they're in the same division. But, oh, we will. Yeah, what sure. are you going to do? Give us time. What are you going to do? And then over on the flip side of NHL things, as we're recording this, this is July 4th, so you guys might already know since this is released on Tuesday, but Monday is the game four of the NHL Stanley Cup Finals with Tampa Bay up 3 nothing. So did like, they win? Did they hoist the cup in right. Montreal? Or did they let Montreal win one? So they can, come so back they can home raise it in uh, Tampa. So on U.S. soil with fans. I guess you guys will already know, but I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you guys right now. Congratulations, Tampa Bay, right. on your sweep in the uh, Stanley Cup final right. trophy. Congratulations, so. Steve Eisenman. They should send him a ring. Two. They should, yep, they should Two send him now, another ring because but... this is his team. His style of play still playing in Tampa. Right. But, yeah, that's basically the Bang and Dang show. We do stupid – and then we got a stupid news story about a meth head that uh, <laughs> that called the cops to ask why he wasn't arrested, and then he got arrested. But you'll find out why he got arrested over there. But, right. uh, like I said, sports galore, sports history of the week, music history of the week, and mm. we always wrap it up with some uh, random fucking whatever. talk about whatever we're – What's up, whatever we're talking about, whatever we pop up in our head. So that's on the Bang and Dang show over there. We'll be back next week for uh, the smorgasbord to wrap up Prohibition, wrapping it up. And, wrapping uh, it up already? What do you mean already? We've already had about 10 episodes. What more do you want? A lot. On Prohibition. <laughs> um, right. We need to get to Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. That's going to be a great episode yes. when we get there. But yeah, that's uh, next week on the Outlaws of Gunslingers. Also, go make sure you're going to manscaped.com. With the code OUTLAWS, get 20% off your order, plus free shipping. Ooh, everybody likes free. And uh, soon to come, maybe some more uh, sponsors that uh, I think if we get... I'm not going to say nothing. You guys would love it. Join us next week, Outlaws and Gunslingers yeah, with... Yeah, bing dang. Uh,